Howdy, Beefler Bart here, and welcome back. I'm gonna pick up where we left off in the last video. So, this are part two. So, what we've got is just a quick recap. Now, I'm gonna play in standalone so we can get a feel for the way it looks. This is a temporary background screen. What I may end up doing is adding a render target in and having an animated character standing here. So he's like doing an idle animation or something like that. It'll look a lot nicer. Um, okay, so we can hit exit game and it'll actually close the game down. Hit play game and we go in and we can walk left and right and do all the side scroller thingies. We haven't really done much with the map. We just want to get something here that we can walk around. The sound in the background is a little bit too loud, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the the sound down on that. And the map is nowhere near finished. So. Let's go ahead and hit our escape key. We can hit resume, exit, or main menu, and then exit. So on our assets folder, quickly, let's go to our audio and our effects, our street queue. And I'm just going to click on the output and adjust the volume. It's already at 0.3, so let's actually take it to 0.1. And we're going to hit save and exit, and that should be good enough. The next thing I want to do is let's go directly to that map. We're going to set it to play in, stand, in selected viewport so we can quickly go in and out and then use our, our escape key to actually go back in. So. What we'll end up doing is making the map go all the way to the border that way and all the way to the border that way. And it'll be our demonstration map or map one, level one, whatever you want to call it. But one thing that I wanted to add in here was some pedestrians just kind of walking around. So one of the things I can do here is I'm going to grab, let's grab all of these guys here. There's going to be a bunch of them to grab at one time, but it's all right. I want to select all of this. This is going to be a, a road intersection. Control C and Control V. And we're going to put another one down here. So we just want to slide it over and line it up there. So now we, we have a quick intersection. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab for these guys, control C, control V, and I'm just going to drag this over here. I'm just going to quickly do this. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on making it um, all the scenery. In fact, I'll probably end up taking all that scenery back out as well. And just remaking everything on the level. I just want this level to be completed for our walking area. And then we can come back in and change it where we have more road sections cutting in more city blocks or whatever you know we just want to give us something else to, to work with because what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually going to add in some pedestrians that are just walking on the street and that's why I needed to have the sidewalk completed going from point A to point B Control C, Control V. So that's good. It goes all the way to the end. And I'm going to quickly do the same thing over here. And then what I'll do is I'll show you how to make a set of. We'll clean up first, and then we'll go ahead and make a set of pedestrians. So I want one, two, three, and four. Control C, Control V. I could do more sections at a time, but I find that anything more than four can be a little tedious to work with. So, control C, control V. And all I'm doing is just making a copy and then pasting another copy in. Drag them in. You can put as many as you want together, like I said, but this is good enough. So we're not talking about huge maps right now. So what I want to do is create, and I can actually do this, and I'll show you a quick cheat here we can work with. 
we've got our sidewalk in and it's going to go all the way from point A to point B going all the way across the map so we have a full way to walk we already have two streets in so a quick cheat on how to speed build these kind of maps is what I'll do is I will make a, another um, copy of this map once I finish this okay, we're only going to need two here control C control V So now that we have this going all the way across, what I'll do is I'll come back over here. We'll do a quick cleanup, make sure that all of our sections here are in their own folder. You see all of this is just floating around. So we want to do um, create a folder, side walk, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab everything for now. And if you've got everything selected, you can manually scroll back up and then do it. But you can also right click on it and select move to and select the folder you want it to go to. But we're already there. So. so now that I've done that, I'm going to do a quick build. That's going to save everything here. And then what I'll do is I'll save the map and then I will also save it as level 2 or um, template and then I'll go in and I'll actually remove all of this stuff and then save it again and I'll replace these two sidewalk sections here that are for that and I'll actually have a template of the map with just sidewalk going from point A to point B and I won't have to keep doing that every time I want to start a new map then all I have to do is just add in the, uh, the side scenery as I need to so what I should have done first, but I didn't think about it. So whenever this gets done doing its um, full build with our lighting build and everything else, um, like I said, I'll then go back in and unfortunately I'm going to have to do another lighting build again, which is going to take a few moments, but it's unfortunate. But then again, it's much easier to do them now while we're talking about it and can discuss features. So it's just about done. So, it is encoding textures, just about finished. All that's popping up on another monitor, so you really can't see it. And we should be good to go. Come on, refresh. You'll be all right. There we go. All right. So, I'm going to save all. And then I'm going to file save current as... I'm going to call this template and it's now I'll remove all of the buildings and the easy way since we've got everything organized in folders over here is to come back over here and grab the apartment pieces delete them and now they're gone and I want to go ahead and do these as well Delete. I want to grab this guy. Delete. Control C. Oh, actually, Control C, Control V with two of them. And now we're going to have to rebuild the lighting. But let's do a save all. Make sure we're not clicked on anything. Turn everything, close everything is good and then we're gonna do another build I know it sucks but let's go ahead and do it and get it over with and now we have this template map that whenever we want to work on on something and I'm actually going to sacrifice the original map that we were doing and I'm gonna save this as level one as well so I'm gonna overwrite what I've already done and it's gonna save me a little bit of time so we have our template map that we can use for creating stuff and I'm going to go ahead and be working on the template map first and then whenever I get the basic portions that I want done on every map that's going to be of this style then I can go ahead and save it as my level one and start building these extra scenery I just want some functionality going on the main portion of the map so that whenever we're actually playing on it there are certain constants that are going to be on every map and one of them is going to be our NPCs that are just walking 
passively around. They're not going to get in our way. Um, they're not going to um, attack us in any way, shape, or form. They're not going to be combative. Everything is just going to be passive. So again, we're going to save all. And to do that, what I'm going to do is go over here to the center. And you see, we're walking back and forth right here. So there's actually extra room here on the sidewalk from this tile to this tile, or pretty much you know that portion of the sidewalk. So what I need to do is come over to my volumes and get a nav mesh bounds, and I need to drop it into the map. And I want to make sure it's lined up with that, and that's that's pretty good. They shouldn't be in our way there, but we'll test it and we'll move it as we need to. But now we need to scale it on the y-axis. So we want this to go... We want it to be in the center. So we're at 113 and we still got more to go. So we're just going to keep doing this until it goes all the way just about to the edge. And that should be good to go. And that's fine over there. We can adjust it later if we need to. And I'm actually going to lower it down just a hair so that it encapsulates the road section there. We can hit P on the keyboard and it'll show us this big long green stripe. That is the area in which the NPCs will be allowed to walk. Thank you, bud. We hit P again, close that off. Now let's make some NPCs. We want them to only walk in that area right there and not be in our darn way because we don't like these pesky um, NPCs. So I'm going to do save all. And is now, let's go to our characters folder and blueprints, and I'm going to create one called, and not a folder because I'm a dub dub. Um, no, let's actually go ahead and we'll we'll put it in a folder, and we'll just hit F2. We'll call that NPC. We're going to go in here, and we're going to create a new blueprint class, actor. And this is going to be our. Uh, uh, we want it to be our base character or um, NPC underscore base. And this could be our master. So we're going to have a master, and then we're going to have. Um, and actually, I don't want to do that. Let's do this a different way. Let's do the easy way. Our blueprints folder. Take our BP player and drag it into that folder, copy here, we go in, and then F2, rename that one to NPC underscore base. And now we can go in here, and we don't need anything that's in here on this. So let's delete that, zoom all the way in. We don't need the side view camera. We don't need the spring arm. So if we look at our viewport, we have our character here. But we want to do this in a cool way so that we're not seeing the same character every freaking time. It's not going to be the same guy. But we'll get to that in just a minute here. So we have a, a character that works. Um, we need to tell him to be able to walk. So on event begin, no, no, let's go with tick, event tick. And what we want it to do is, first off, let's add a variable called is moving close to mark. We were asking a question, is our, our NPC moving? So we want to get that. We want to hold down the B key and then left click. And that's how we quickly make a branch key or a branch node. Connect them up here. So what we're doing on our event tick, and I'm going to move this over a little bit because I'm going to show you how to collapse things down and make them look a little nicer. So we need to ask, is our character, our NPC, moving? If it is true, we don't want to do anything right now. Um, but if it is false, we want to tell them to go ahead and move, right? So we want them to be able to move. So how will we do that? Well, it's a AI move to location. No, nope, but AI move to. So with our AI move to, what we want to do is pawn, we want to get a reference to ourself. And then from there, 
our destination. This is where we're going to do our work. Target actor, we don't need because he's not going to be walking to a person. So we actually just want to give him a destination to actually walk to. So how do we find the destination for him to go to? And mm, Well, um, first off, can we get from here? Let's type in location. Now, let's actually just go ahead and grab um, a reference to... You should be able to... You would think that get world location you could uh, uh, obtain from the target mesh. So with that, yes, we have our, our, our world location, but that's where we are. That's not where we want to go. So what do we need to do here is drag out from destination and get random point and a navigatable radius. So we're going to drag that in here and get a return value and connect it to the origin because that's where we're starting from is the location of where our target mesh is. And we have a radius and other things here but this is all we really need to worry about is our radius and we're going to leave the other radius in the AI move to alone. So let's set our radius to 5,000. Okay. So he's going to move 5,000 units every time he is told to start walking. So what we've done is we've we've asked, are is he moving, or he or she moving? Is our character moving? If it is no, then we want them to move. Now from here, and let's go ahead and I'm just going to line this up. I'm I'm just a lot of OCDs about trying to keep things somewhat neat looking. So, at this point, we want to go ahead and from the EXE, the executive or executional link, we want to do set is moving, and we want that to be true because now this this character is moving. But whenever they succeed, we want to first off set is moving to. Um, yeah, okay, they're moving on success and on fail. Whenever they get to the, you know, the, their destination, we're going to set is moving to zero. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to add a, a delay because we don't want them to just stand there and look pretty at the, well, we could give them a fixed time period, but we're not. We're going to go, go ahead and do float. Um, well, let's, let's actually do this right here. Random float in range. And with this random float in range, we'll click and connect these two together. We want to set the minimum of two seconds and the maximum of five seconds. So now what we've done is we've set the uh, thing to um, delay, and we probably need to move these around here. Um, because what we want to do is whenever they get to their destination, we want them to wait for between two and five seconds and then start moving again. So now we'll go ahead and connect these two together. We're setting our moving to false. We're not moving. So now if we're not moving, then we can tell them to move. I hope this makes sense. Let's go ahead and compile and save. I'm going to drag it back here because I'm sure I'm screwing up something here. Now we'll come over here to our NPC base and I'm going to drag one in here and I'm going to drag another one over here now we need to make sure they are inside their their walk space because if I put another one right here he's not in that zone and he won't be able to walk so there we go he's running he stops he waits for a couple seconds and then does he resume walking Yes, he does. 
So that's cool. They're going to do that. And I'm going to go this way because now both of them are on this side of the map. Now, they've run into each other. This could be a problem, right? They're going to sit here and face off against each other because one's trying to go one way, one's trying to go the other way, and the area that they have to walk in is limited. So now what happens is one of them finally says, you know what, screw you, I'm going to go the other direction. Then they talk, turn around, now it looks like they're talking to each other. Look, I'm going to kick your ass, you're in my way. So there you go. So they'll actually, on their own, they're semi-smart enough to figure it out. But this poor old guy over here, he's stuck. He can't move because he's not within the um, the nav mesh bounds. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and delete him. But we don't want it to be the same guy. And it's cool that you know we have them, but let's make it a little bit different. Now, before we start look, you know, making the changes in here, let's go into our, our Polygon City... Look at our meshes, go to our characters, and what does we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine potential characters that we can work with. That's awesome. So what we can do here now is, like I was saying about trying to clean things up, well, I'm going to scroll out so I can get all of this in here at one time. While well, I have everything selected, now I can right click on it, and I want to scroll down to collapsed nodes and now I can call this my um, navigation so all that stuff is now piled up into one little small node that if we ever want to get access to it all we have to do is double click on it and we can make our changes if we want to make it to where it can output because you can see now if we go back here there's no output node on this we can't continue from there we don't want to, but if you ever did want to add that on there to continue through once you've done this for something else, I'm going to take both of these and I would connect them to the output. Just drag it over and it'll create the pins that we need. Pretty cool. So instead, what I'm going to do is my favorite thing. I'm just going to run a sequence node. And then from that sequence node, I can go ahead and just hammer out whatever I want off of here. And if I need more pins, I can just hit add pin. So we've got our navigation, that's cool, but if we ever need to add anything else on there, we can do it off of there. But now we want to do something off of event begin play. So from the event begin play node, let's go ahead and what we want to do is we want to take our character here and we want to change the mesh. We don't need to change the animations, we just want to change the mesh. So we can randomly pick between those nine character meshes and it'll randomly pick every time we hit begin play. So every time we play this, it may be two different um, characters that we see there, or a different character each time. So to do that, let's go back to our event graph. On event begin play, we're going to get a reference to our mesh. And we want to set skeletal mesh. And if we're going to set our skeletal mesh, then we can actually come over here and select businessman shirt. So, and that's good. That's going to tell us to set one, but how do we get it to, to go between those nine? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a branch node, and then I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to random integer in range and I want to use 0 through 8 or if you're weird like me and you can't figure out okay well the, the spacing I want to choose between 1 and 9 you could do 0 and 8 it's the same thing 0 is counted as the first digit but in the real world I like using 1 through 9 so that's what I'm going to use because I'm weird and slow mentally so what we need to do now is all this stuff is going to get in the way but we're going to use it. We want to drag off from the return value and hit equal equal. And then click right here. And we want to do one. So if the return value of this random integer that it picks is one, then we're going to go to this. So now what we need to do is go ahead and, and I'm just going to move this over. I'm going to end up using it, but start off here 
and I'm just going to spread this out. I'm going to control C and then I'm going to count them out. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because I'm going to reposition them anyway. I just wanted to go ahead and get them here. And, you know, spacing to me, it's one of those things where, oh no, I got to have it spaced this way and it's got to look symmetrical that way. I, I've got a lot of OCDs. But there's nothing wrong with trying to make clean blueprints. You know, simply because if you ever have to go back in and fix something else later, it's a lot easier to read through this than it is through random chicken scratch. So now we've we've asked that question: Is it equal to one? Is it equal to? We need to change the numbers here, but we need to connect this to the top of each one of those. So that also is going to take a few moments. You know, just grab it from the return value and come all the way down and connect it to each one of them. And then we're going to have to change the number on each one of them. So, with that we have if it is 2, if it is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So, now if it is equal to 1, then we want to set Skeletal Mesh to that guy. We can move this here because now we're going to need 8 more branch nodes. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, we'll just throw them all over the place. So from the Faults node, we're going to come over to here. What I want to do is just kind of try to neaten this up the best that I can to get started with. So if it is not one, then we want to go down to here. And we're going to end up connecting this to here. And we're going to ask, is it two? And then control C, control V. If it is not, then set it to that. And we'll go down and we'll make this the second character in the list, which is businessman shirt. And then we're just going to have to go through and play connect the dots here. And I'm going to make this all somewhat symmetrical and clean the best that I can. We have to connect the faults to, to there. We need to connect the mesh to the target. And I guess the best way to do it, instead of creating all of those at one time, let's control C, control V, and let's post this in here. To make this work out a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and do this, control C, scroll out, control V, and paste that in there. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there are plenty of ways you can do this differently to make it neat and organized. But this is the way I'm going to do it so we can see everything laid out. And now, to make sure I'm good on everything, I need to go ahead and start connecting my my Boolean, which is the red node to the red node. So that those are done. And then I can move on to the next part, which will be connecting the mesh. So we've got two more to go. Yeah, so like we did before, this is like long and drawn out, but we'll end up collapsing it down to a node like that so it's nice and small. So we've done all that. Now we need to connect our mesh. For now, I can just go ahead and drag this over here, and I'm just going to make it to where it's used. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing it this way so that um, it's a better visual representation, and then it gets the point across. I'm just going to drag this node over and do it that way. It's the basic simple way of doing things. And if anything can be done that's simple to get the job done, I'm going to go the simple route and I can always come back in and, and change it later. And this is just going to be our, our
our base one. The reason why I'm doing this is a um, so I call it the NPC base because I'm going to make um, child actor blueprints from that one that can be doing other things too. I can add additional code into it to make it work. So now we need to make sure we've we've done this one, and that's our businessman shirt. This is businessman suit. This one will be the third one, which is businesswoman. This will be number four. Four. We have more work to do. One, two, three, four, five. So we know we're on jacket. Then police. Um, yeah. So if you lose your, your place, you can always mouse over. We know we got female police. And then after female police, we need hoodie. So we're at male hoodie. And then male jacket. And then male police. So that's going to be all of our characters. And now you can do the same way to set it up for... Um, changing the skin variable too because with the polygon city stuff each one has a uh, different uh, like four or five different or more in some cases um, different variable skins so uh, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second I just want to make sure I connect the faults node to the entrance of the branch node So even though this is huge and drawn out and everything else, it's still it's going to work because it's in a basic format for selecting between 1 through 9 and randomly assigning that. And that's for the mesh. But you notice also we have a material here, which is for element 0. I could do the same thing. You see you've got texture 0, 1, A, B, C, and then 2, A, B, C, 3, A, B, C, 4, A, B, C. So you've got 12 different skins if you really wanted to get that technical for um, setting up our character. So let's actually see what happens now when we hit play. It's our businessman shirt, businessman shirt. Um, event begin play. And we've left off something here. Random integer and range. It's going to go from here to here to here. We're setting our skeletal mesh. What did I leave off? Not seeing anybody. Of course, you're going to walk all the way around. So it was working. It was just one of those things where it just randomly both of them picked being the same character at the same time. That was the original one that we had set up. So you can see we got two different females right there. So it did work. It was just a rare fluke that uh, looked like it was wrong. Now, if we wanted to avoid them from having that running into each other thing, then the way we can go about that is actually making our width a little bit wider but since we want to only walk in this section we don't want them walking there well let me explain that this is why I'm showing this method is how you can randomly set uh, different things um, and honestly it's the way that I learned it works it's a much more visual way of setting up individual so from that I mean if you want to go through and and set it up different it's, it's up to you but this is this is my little side project of screwing around with it and this is what I've always done and it works and again I can take all of these and select them and I can do collapse nodes and it's um, mesh and why did it uh, it deleted my thing there didn't tell it to delete anything so that collapsed graph we can call that um, mesh mixer and again if we ever need to go into it we can just double click on it and then go back to our event graph we don't need an, uh, a way to get out of it because again no, I appreciate it. I, I never turn down free um, free advice on things. 
but I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put a sequencer node in in case we need to tie anything off of that. And so this is the, the base master to where we can actually, if we need to, we can make changes to this one and instead of modifying this to be something totally different, if we go into it now and go into our character folder, um, NPCs. Now if I wanted to create something a little bit different then I can come over here and right click and create child blueprint class and then I can actually say I'm not going to end up keeping this one but now I can go to the mesh and change the texture out. So I can have this one is always going to be texture 4A. You see it's changing the color of his suit uh, whereas um, B is going to change some of the, the, the facial features. And some of these actually w look like they don't work, but they do. They just take a little while to, to load in. Some of, them, some of them don't. So you can get different skin colors. You can get um, all kind of different stuff. So I'm actually not going to keep this one. But that's what you would do is create a Child Doctor Blueprint of that. So this is actually our, our demo map. We're actually going to look at our maps folder. This is our template map. We're going to save all, save selected. Now if there's anything else we want to have as a common factor that goes between our maps, like say, well, you know, I've got two road intersections. I'm sure I'm going to end up making more you know, things of that nature. But I'm just looking for things that are going to be common denominators between all of my maps. So like for right now, I can actually take this and file save current as, and I'm going to replace level one with this one. So now, whenever I'm doing this, I'll have to do a build on level one. But now that I'm on level one, it's going to replace all the data on there. and once it's done doing its thing here, see we're now on level one again and I'm going to go back to template. So now we're actually editing on the template map and this will be our, our master for creating basic levels. Now I'm not going to do all of them the same way as you're just running down a sidewalk. Um, I want to have a little bit of variety. I might do where the sidewalk ends and you go underground or something. I might do something a little bit different. But this is the a good way to start. Plus, I want to actually look at doing platforms instead of just doing flat ground only and jumping over a, a barricade or something, jumping over a car, the same old junk. I want to put platforms where you can actually jump up onto the platforms. Things like that. So, But with the template map, I wanted to go ahead and establish the things that are going to be constants first before I start actually editing on a map. Um, I don't think I see any to clean up my mess here. The nav mesh bounds. Put that in the map shit folder. NPC. Uh, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm so used to coming up here and doing this. I'm not used to this actually working where you can just right click anywhere in this um, world outliner. We're going to do NPC folder. I'm going to grab these two guys and chuck them in the NPC folder. Alright, so I can't think of anything at this moment. We'll do again save all and I should have done that before I saved it as uh, level 01. Save current as... Yes, yes, I know. I'm sure I'll come up with something else that'll be a constant that needs to be on each map. But to keep from being boring right now, what I'm going to do is, since this is going to be a template, I want to create a test map. And what I'm going to do is go to File, New Level, and I'm going to use VR Basic. This is going to be my test map. It doesn't matter what it is. Now, I don't want all these extra things in here, so I'm going to grab my balls, I mean, a ball and my cube and the pyramid and I'm going to delete them 
they're cool to play with because they have physics and you learn the basics of physics on um, setting up the stuff to fall over and whatnot. And I'm going to take my player start and I'm just going to shove it over in the corner. And then I need to make sure my world settings, I set my game mode override, to, which is going to be screwy, is I don't really want the side scroller game mode. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll we'll use it anyway. So we're gonna actually set this on the zero axis and make sure we rotate it because we want them facing the correct direction. So if we hit play now, we're gonna move left and right, and that's cool. So another thing here, and I'm actually going to move them in the middle. And 100. Play. And now we have that, the mouse cursor crap again. And it only affects in that, playing in selected viewport. But just like I did before, and I'm going to do a save all, save selected, and I want to call this my test map. And just like I did with like level 1 and the main menu and that kind of stuff. Go into the blueprint, open level blueprints. This stuff right there. And I'm just going to copy it in just to be quick on it. But setting the input mode to game only and getting rid of the mouse cursor. Um, I put that in every single solitary map. Even though it's just as easy to put it into the player character, I get into the habit of putting it in there because I want to make sure and I want to force every instance of when you join that map it's going to make sure you're able to play it. It's just settling my OCD and, and, and whatnot. I don't want to hit play. I don't have to worry about anything. It can just walk back and forth. So we need to use our test map for something wise. We want to create some ways of killing and harming our player. We want to cause some damage. Even though it doesn't have any health or anything just yet, then we still need some way of, of creating some mayhem. And I've kind of looked over the props, and I don't see anything in this. And I probably should have used the uh, City Studios uh, uh, sci-fi or the war or anything else. Um, can't think of anything that would be great for causing damage. <coughs> The dungeons is... Oh, man, it's got some cool stuff. It's got some spiky wheels and saw blades and junk like that that you can use to really harm the player. Um, but I chose the city pack to work with. Even though I love the city pack, don't get me wrong. But it doesn't cater to the, uh, the killing folks thing. So there's a couple things that I want to do. and Besides just killing us, I want to have um, a spring plate, a jump platform, or some way of throwing us into the air. You know, these two guys right here, I'm actually going to go with this one, with the octagonal shape. Now this is meant for um, putting like street lights and poles coming up there, but that's not what I'm going to use it for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my assets folder, and I'm going to minimize some of this stuff for right now. And inside the assets folder, I want to create a um, gadgets. And I'm going to create a new blueprint actor. Um, I'm going to call this our Springer base uses a master so we can adjust the the levels of it. I'm going to open it, make sure that it's in this tab. I need to change that option in the uh, settings, but um, we use our props. The octagonal sidewalk, or it's a prop sidewalk panel 04. I'm going to select it now, and then I'm going to come back up here, add component, and it's right there. So it's automatically in where we need to be. And 
next I want to go ahead and add in a box collision and I don't want it to be huge it doesn't need to be tall so I want to change the scale down on the Z to point two that's good enough we want it to just be right there on top so if we want we can jump over it and not actually have this effect so I'm gonna go ahead and compile save and everything else dimension wise looks good and I am going to dump all this stuff select my box right click on it and on component begin overlap really simple other actor we want to drag off from the other actor pin and what do we call our player cast to BP underscore player when our player steps on this this is a really complicated system for doing this um, yeah it's launch character super complicated I mean it takes forever to set this up um, we're gonna start off with 500 on the z-axis compile and save now we can actually grab one and go back into it I told you it's really ca really complicated you know Springer base let's put this on the zero zero let's move it over here hit play it's not in the right place why are you not in the right place zero 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 and you are you know, zero zero and I told you to slide this way so now when we step on it it's gonna throw us in the air 500 is a little bit on the weak side we want more jumpies yeah it's really weak so let's give it a little bit more oomph let's go with 1000 double it now when we step on it boink, it's a little better it depends on how we want it to how far we want to throw it because you may not want your character to be thrown a huge amount see we can actually jump over it and avoid it or we can use it either one so I mean if you get really crazy with it you know I mean you can add another zero on there and 10,000 I mean that's gonna be redonkulous but who knows you know maybe what you want to do um, you set it play around with it all you want to is you actually have a little bit of control in flight but the problem is you don't want to get carried away on your height that's just way too high and see we missed so be careful with how much you put it on here let's go ahead and do 1500 and hit play so now if we want to come over here and use it to spring us up to another platform we actually have a way of doing that so if you just want to use simple platforming system like say um, you could use a cube I like to use geometries put on a box geometry we want to set this to zero and zero I'm gonna move this over to here now to butt it up against that wall and then I'm gonna go ahead and change the Z height to 10 I'm gonna move it up here hit play now we have a platform we can jump to the reason why I use the box geometry is because when you start applying textures to it um, you can actually find a, a texture or a material you want to apply to it um, in this case I don't have a whole lot to work with I just want to do cube material or textures from the, the polygon won't work for this I'm going to put water texture on there it's not really going to suit us too well. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and put cube material on it. Now, it's applied it only to the side that I have selected. 
So what I can do is come over here and hmm textures it's just the one select select all adjacent surfaces and display two materials and do the same thing here cube material we're gonna use the second one and there we go now it's applied that same material on all sides so now we actually have a platform we can jump up to just for testing porpoises Geez, I like a flipper so now that we have a spring pad that we can use to jump back and forth and jump up to higher ledges which is going to come in handy for what we're doing we need some way of harming our character we need to kill his behind he's got life too easy all he's got to do is walk down the sidewalk and yeah so what are we going to use to harm our character well what do we have for meshes we have the ramp mesh not going to cut it buildings well we don't want to really have a building attacking kill our player uh, characters will make some attacking NPCs later environments what can we do what can we do props okay so lack of anything else better for right now I'll come up with another another way we're gonna use a pallet and I will figure out something I'll make something later on we just need something to um, be a spinning item of death so we're gonna do a blueprint an actor and we're just gonna do a pallet well how much fun can it be to have a pallet um, well we're gonna make it to where it actually spins and if the player walks over to it and contacts it then you know yeah it'll harm them it's a start I'll come up with a better model system where the crap did I see it right there so I'm gonna select the palette come back over here add component static mesh there we go we got a palette and I want to add in a box collision and that box collision since it's sticking to the ground right there I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out a little bit we want it to be the size of the pallet now you can make it a little bit larger and it all depends on how you want it to be if you want it to be where it, the pallet has no physics and you could normally walk through it um, that's one thing or you can set it to where it, um, as long as you're close to it then you're gonna take damage So I'm gonna leave it a little bit bigger so no matter what you do with it it's gonna cause damage it's gonna hurt you and then I'm gonna go ahead and add another component a rotating movement so it's gonna spin so if we actually come over here and go to gadgets and now place one of them into the map and we want to actually pick it up a little bit hit play we can actually stand on it and it'll spin but since it's not perfectly centered it's gonna slowly push it back off which might be useful if you wanted it to be that way but let's actually take a look at it and let's set that to zero now if we come over here and jump on it we can stand pretty much in the center of it and we'll just spin around and around and around and around and then we can go to our platform oh no we missed and then oh we can't quite get there so then we need our our spring pad to be able to get us up to there and then there so that's pretty cool we can we have a spinning movement that can come in handy if you just want a splitting uh, spinning platform to let your your player get into it but what I'm gonna do is make this into something that's gonna cause us damage um, in fact let's go ahead and right click create child blueprint and palette killer so we can get rid of the original palette. We'll leave that one alone because you know 
we might want to use that one for a platform to jump up and down on. But everything else is already here, so now all we have to do is go to our event graph, and we've got all this stuff right here, so we can connect off from that if we need to. Actor event began to overlap. Since there was nothing there, um, this may or may not work well for us. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that differently. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. And I'll just go ahead and do a duplicate. Right click on it and select duplicate, or you can do Control W and Killer Palette. Now, when we go in there, we can dump everything. Right click on our box, add event on component, begin overlap. And this is where we want to go from our other actor and BP underscore player, your player character, and then we want to pause for a moment because we don't have anything there. We need to go to our characters folder, blueprints, and go to our actual character, and our character needs a bit of health. So variable, we're going to call it health, and we're going to make it as a float, compile, save, I'm going to do 100 because that's what I do, and compile and save. Alright, so now we have 100 health, and we're going to end up setting up a um, an actual health bar here soon too. All right, so we now have health of 100. So we don't really need anything from them right now. So from here, we need to get a reference to our health. We want this pallet. Anytime we bump into this pallet, we want it to cause 50 damage. For right now, it's going to be a high number so that we can actually see a, a quick effect to it. And for us to get killed by it, we just need to get hit twice. So um, we're going to do float minus float. We're going to set that to 50. And then we want to drag off from here and set health. We want to do our health checks actually on our player and not in here. So. What we're going to do is every time this pallet hits us, it's going to knock us 50, bu uh, 50 damage, 50 bucks. So that's all we really need it to do for right now. Um, and that's going to be fine. Our player... Let's actually... That's our escape menu. Um, for right now, let's set it off an event tick. So we can have some way of seeing that... Um, we're dead, so to speak. And we just want to get a reference to our health. And branch node. And we'll do from here equal equal. That's a float. And if it's equal to zero, then we want to. say print text. I just want to have a visual notifier saying, hey, you're dead now. Hello, stupid. You are dead. Alright, so this is just a visual notifier so I can test the fact that um, my spinning pallet of death is actually uh, killing us. So we're going to hit play, come over here, ouch, that hurt, ouch, that hurt, hello, stupid, you're dead. I printed it that one time. Um, event tick, so it's going to check our health, and, you know, we could actually loop that back around and really make it annoying as crap. And we killed it, yay! So I knew that was going to break it. it. It set an infinite loop there. 
And this is why we save frequently. So it's going to be locked up for just a moment. Hey, stupid, you're dead. So, yeah, knew that was going to happen. But now let's go ahead and delete the print text. Um, we'll work on something on that in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and create a event begin play. So when we first start playing, we need to have our player HUD, which we haven't created yet. But we're going to go ahead and do create widget. And we, like I said, we haven't created that widget yet. And we need to get player controller. And then we want to add to viewport. So when we first start to play, we need to add that. Um, and yes, I know it's going to give me an error. You can shut up. I know about the error. I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to the uh, the program. So go to our interface folder and we want to create a new user interface widget blueprint. And we want uh, the hell do we want? We want a player, not play her. I like to play her, but uh, anyway. Player HUD. And yes, it's not really a HUD, it's actually a, a widget. So it doesn't matter. It works for me. Get a progress bar. For now, I'm just going to shove it down here in the bottom right hand corner. It's good enough. It'll get the point across. I'm going to change the color to true red. So it's 100 zero, zero, and 1. And then I'm going to copy it up here so I have an, another reference to it whenever I need it. And click OK. Our progress. There we can see how it looks. We're going to get binding, create binding, drag you over here. And because I like things to be neat and organized, I don't want it to say get percent. I want it to be called get health. And from there, we want to. Cast to BP player, which is our character. We want to get player character. From that, we want to get health. And since we're basing it off of 100, we need to do a float divided by float with 100 here. And then this goes to here. Super simple. Compile and save. So now we go into play. What do we forget here? Oh yeah, we need to then say player HUD, compile, save. Now we go into play. We have our health bar. Hit that, takes away half our health. Hit it again, we have no health. All right, so that's cool. We, we have a simple health bar system. We'll change the whole UI later. We just want to have a functional UI. So every time we hit this one, it kills us or does 50 damage. And anytime we hit this one, it doesn't do anything. It'll knock us about, but, but we can use that as the platform, even though it won't let us jump up there, but still. This one will cause us damage. We haven't done a death effect yet. And if we look at our character folder, blueprints, we need to, if our health is equal to zero, death. We need to create a death functionality. And I'll come back and I'll clean this up later. And custom event called death. And that's good, lovely. Now we have a death custom event. Compile and save, and then from here we want to run death. So whatever we put after this custom event is going to happen when our health hits zero. So I need other sound effects like the sound of him getting hit, you know, a character getting hurt, uh, maybe some particle effects of blood splattering, a thumping noise of him getting hit with it, things like that can 
bring that up to be a little bit nicer. But from this death custom event, for right now, we just want to go ahead and just do something simple. I'm going to go ahead and, and make it really, really simple. And even though this is not the map we wanted to, to keep it on, we're going to um, set our world location. But we want to go ahead and set our player. We want to basically teleport us back to the start location. So the first thing we want to do is set world location. Um, but I don't want to do it necessarily from here. Um, I will, but. Let's see what I can do here. Get a reference to self. And then from there, set world location. And we're going to set it as mesh from here. Okay, set our world location based off of our mesh. and set our world location is back to zero. Compile and save. Let's just see what happens. Yay! That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. Absolutely shut up. So, I've done this before and sometimes it wants to work, sometimes it doesn't. Um, first off, we're underground. So let's set it to 200. This is not going to resolve the issue. I'm going to have to go about it a different way. did it in the, uh, the video earlier, and it worked this way. Because it's just pulling the mesh only, and it's not pulling the capsule. So let's actually do that. And... Yes, yes, yes. There's no target. And it won't let me do a full reference to self here. So, um, the target, we need to... I hate to do it, but it's a capsule component. It's not the preferred method for me, but let's um, see what happens now. We can do that. Yep. Um, it's changing our capsule component, but I'm going to have to look and see how I did it on the other one. In fact, there's an easy way for me to do that. I can actually steal it from the other project that we're doing, copy it in, and go to... I don't want to showcase what I'm doing here because, well, it's not always a good thing to do. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to my documents and to my stored projects. And I was doing it in the tutorial one. Content. Again, I don't recommend doing this, but it works. Side scroller character. And now what I'm doing here, this is actually called City Side. And what I want to do here is copy that in here. complying with my request. Copy and replace. Alright, so it's not showing it there. Um, 
I did copy it in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and close this down. Save all. File. Open project. I have a shit ton. Um, city side. I'm going to reopen the project again. And it should have it in here. Ah. Copying in the wrong file to begin with. So it's it's actually being absolutely stupid. So what I wanted to do was actually copy that particular one in here and cheat. Unless they've changed something on um, on how this thing actually works and how it used to work. All I was doing was copying in the uh, the blueprint. and it used to always work but now it's got a black line over it anyway so inside here what I did before and that's not gonna matter um, in the death sequence set actor location ah that's it so let's actually go back in our BP player on death I had set actor location let me try that. So, yeah, I just reloaded the project. And that's what it did. Um, set actual location because I can't remember what I did in the video a couple hours ago. It happens when you get old. So you set it your actual location, and what I did before was. Um, got a reference to self there. Even though I already got it, I want to make sure that I got a reference to myself. Because I, I refer to myself quite a bit. Teleport. The location, I'm going to set it to 200. 000. zero, zero compile and save. And... Because... I, I don't want to delete this one just yet to solve it from having a screw up. Let's compile and save. I still got an error because escape. All right. So now, if we go in here, go back to our test map and hit play. Ouch, that hurt. Ouch, that hurt. And it's just got us floating in the air. So why did it work in this one and not in the other one? Huh. Well, I'm just going to copy this whole thing in there. Totally doesn't make sense. Because it worked in the video we did earlier and it was no problem. Everything worked just hunky dory. Because it damages us, kills us, and what in the hell is that? Holy crap. I don't know what the hell that was. Teleported my camera outside the wall. Kind of simplify this a little bit. I'm going to take this arena, the frozen room, and I'm going to do... Just make it huge. Actually, I'm going to leave it at 1 on the Z height. Now I go back in and play. I've got a bigger arena to work with.
See, now everything's working. Um, zero, zero, zero location there. Oh, um, yeah, dumb dumb. You guys let me do that again? Forgot to change my values that. That's why it was screwing up. And now we can play. Yay. So we have our, our same death system from earlier. And that, again, I will revise because it looks kind of crappy. I think instead what I would end up doing is setting it to ragdoll the character so he falls over dead um, or play an animation for a death animation. And then once the, the player then finishes his death animation, then would go into um, uh, the next part which would then be teleporting and resuming the ability to move and that kind of stuff. But at least we have something now triggered off of death, so we can see, okay, this was a death thing. Um, our current position here for our player is 100, so let's actually just go ahead and set it to 100, so he's not like floating in the air anymore. But it will at least freeze us in location. So I can't move. Now I'll wait my three seconds. And there we go. So at least we have something now that can kill us. Um, I guess we need to have a little bit of variance on how it looks. So I'm look on our gadgets, go into our killer palette, and close the other guys up. So in our killer palette, click on our viewport, our palette. Let's see if we can change our texture. Um, e. uh, to B, let's try 3A. That's good. So now, when we look at it, we actually can see, okay, this is a darker color palette, and it's going to cause me damage and, and hurt me. But this one, I can stand on it all day long, and it won't hurt me. It's a good pellet. All right, so this is a, just a couple little things. I'm, I'm still debating on if I want to keep doing just the city pack or if I want to add in something else too because, honestly, a pellet for killing me isn't the best thing in the world because I want to use the pellet also. Um... Let's actually go ahead and create a duplicate of this one. And again, we can use Control-W. Left-click, Control-W, and Palette, um, Platform. I'm going to go into it, get rid of the rotating movement, and Compile, Save. Let's actually get rid of the box collision as well. No, I'm not going to get rid of the box collision because I want to have like a footstep sound of sound of your feet landing on wood, and that's where I can do that. It can trigger it once you actually land on it. That's what actually um, will happen is you're going to be able to then use it as a uh, way to get up to something, and it makes sound, boards creaking, things like that. Um, so now we got this spinning one. This one just spins and does nothing. So we'll just throw it over here, and then we'll grab our platform palette, and let's go ahead and zero that out. And I'm going to set it up to where it's just below this one, and then Control C, Control V, and we'll drop it down a little bit. So now we come over here. If we don't want to use our spring platform, we can get stuck here in between. Oh, lovely. Let's actually move this one over, move this one over, so we don't get stuck. So as we're, we're doing our jump to the platform, that's cool and all that, but we can use this as a way to jump here, jump here, it's going to stop us. So I'm actually for now going to go ahead and move my spring platform to over here. So now when we come over here, when we jump up to here, it's going to 
force our body up against there and drop down. So jump up over here and it forces us to drop down. So now when we jump over to here, we fall off. So if we wanted to have somebody to keep from falling off normally, we could put something on the edge there that's just enough to stop us, but not keep us from jumping over it. So now when we come over here and jump down, if we come over here, we can use a spring platform. And so this is the kind of things that we're going to want to look at is making sure our barricades are close enough on our platforms for jumping to where they're just high enough to jump up, but I can't jump directly to the second one. It stops me here, makes me having to come over here and jump and stops me. Makes me have to jump over to here. So we can actually continue on and force us and keep our player on track where we want them to jump and land. So like this one here, we could actually take that platform that we made here and Let's click on it here and let's change the size and the Y value to be twice as long and then move it to right there. So now we jump over to here, it forces us on the first platform, forces us there, and we can't jump all the way over, but we can jump just to the edge. And now we can't jump back because these are going to cause us to have a, a blockage. We can't get there. So to get back up, we need to jump on our platform, and now we can go back backwards again. We want to watch out for the dark pellets, because the dark pellets are going to be what kills us. For right now, it's our only killer item. You know, I honestly want to put in the, um, the dungeons. I really do, because there's some really cool stuff in there for torturing and killing our players. But I, on the same hand, I want to keep with the city theme because this was called this, you know, the city side scroller. So we kind of want that to be the thing. If we jump off here and land on the platform, it's not going to let us do much. And with this platform set up the way it is, the jump platform, it's going to let us slowly be able to get on there. We can go into the eternal stand on this. So that's the kind of things we can look at for normal-ish kind of platforms, but we're not limited to those for our platforms. We can do the same thing for setting up a platform that is not a blueprint. We can actually set in the um, static meshes directly and make them into platforms. I was just doing these as blueprints because I was adding effects to them. If you don't want them to actually do effects, then yeah, you don't have to. I mean, you can sit here and add stuff that's already pre-made. You could do sidewalk sections. Those might come in handy too because we can put those down. What's that happening, Xavier Frank? So we actually have some pre-made path sections we can use for our side scroller. Um, want to put some water in? No problem. Um, although this is just, you know, not something that I would keep in here. We want our, our character walking through water, then we could add that in there. Of course, we don't have any sound effects for it, and it's not like deep water. You could always actually add the swimming effects and animations and so forth, and have a player swim. But for now, we're going to go ahead and dump the water. Um, stairwell. Even though we can't go down the stairwell right now, because, well, we're, we're not on a regular map. You see how it has all the um, the stairs and everything in it? It's kind of limiting because of the fact that it dead ends down here. Um, I'd like to have my own collisions correctly set up on it. Um, but even props could be used. Like we use the pallet as a, um, a platform, but you could also use things like a billboard. I mean, you got a billboard sign right here. You could actually take that and rotate it around and rotate it around. And it doesn't have to be flat. I mean, it can be angled as well. Set that over here, maybe. And we need to set that to zero. 
So I mean, you could use whatever you want to, but think about whenever you're creating these, where you want your your people to. Okay, that item is not zeroed out normally, so you're gonna have to manually place that one. Because the zero for that particular one is actually meant to go on a sign. I'm not complaining about it because it works great for the way it's supposed to work. But like I said, you could use signs. Could be okay. This sign was was down on the side, and that's how you're able to get there. And like, oh, now it's a, a blockage, and you can't get back over it, or you have to jump or whatever. Um, you have to kind of use your imagination with this, and so I'm just kind of experimenting with them in here. This is the test map. It's specifically for testing out these different things like that. I mean, you also have vehicles. And I probably, I'm going to go ahead and set up a, um, I mean, we can set up our van there and put our barricades on top of the van or make the van the actual barricade or make it part of where we need to go or could turn it around, make it sideways, lay it on its side, whatever you want to do. Um, but like I said, these are actually good things we can do. So we can put them in the map and use the vehicles. You don't land on the pallet. There we go. To make them something we actually have to worry about jumping over. And that's actually not a bad theory as well. Having you jump across um, these right here, and then you jump on that brown one by accident and it kills you. Why did it teleport me to here instead? And now I'm here. And, okay. And that was an insta-kill. So, yeah. This kind of gets the point across, the things you can do to set up barricades like with this uh, BSP geometry when you're working with BSPs I've got several videos that I put out just on BSP geometries if you look at what you've got to work with you've got stairs that will definitely come in handy if we want to put things in here let's get rid of the van we we'll get rid of the, the ambulance we can actually get rid of this and this and this and this and I'm going to throw that over here just for giggles if I want to set up uh, stairs to go from here down to here, I can actually come over here and do curved or linear or spirals. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to rotate it around. So it's going to face the direction that we want. And we want to make sure that it's in line with where we are. So we need it to be about here, but we want to make it actually go from there to there. You don't want to use the select and scale objects. When you're working with BSP geometries, forget this button ever existed. Forget it's there. It doesn't exist anymore. If you want to change anything on this BSP geometry, you do it here. The number of steps, you can say, okay, well, let's make it 20 steps. Is that high enough? No. Well, let's make it 30 steps. Well, that's a little too high. So we need to take off two steps and let's make it 28. That looks about right. So if I want to create a set of stairs to get me up there, that's really close, but it's not exactly perfect. So what if we change our stair height to 21? Well, then it's too high, but then again, we can always take one step off go with 27 and play around with it that way. Now if we come over here to our stairs, isn't that beautiful? It's perfect. So you make your adjustments to your stairs that way. Now what about putting a material on there? I don't have any materials on here I really can work with. I'm going to select one face and it's going to be ugly because you got all of these. I'm going to go to a Geometry, Select. I'm going to go to Select All Adjacent Surfaces, or Shift-J. Now it's going to pick all the freaking pretty little sides, and I'm going to pick out a texture from the list, which is just Cube Material, and done. So now I've just 
put that material on every single solitary damn one. Then I go back in here and play, and it has one material on everything. It and that party. That's lovely. Now, as much as I love the city theme, I'm probably going to end up incorporating a bunch of other asset packs in here from City Studios. Because the more I think about, like, well, it'd be kind of cool if you put a pirate ship uh, cannon shooting at you, and you have to wait for the cannonballs to go by. Or in the the dungeons pack, you've got the saw blades that are spinning, and if they hit you, they're going to kill you, or whatever. So what I think I'll do is we're going to end this stream for now, because it's um, after midnight, my time. And... It'll let me think about what I want to do on here, and we'll start adding some other cool stuff in here. But with the task map done, we at least have one thing that can kill us, which is that dark spinning thing. We have a death animation or a death system started, so it'll get us there. We're getting there. And getting some of the core basics done is all we're worried about doing right now. The map, I'm not super worried about it. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and hit save all. Save selected. Let's actually minimize some of this stuff here. And as we're getting ready to close things out for the evening, go to the maps. We're going to go to the main menu map. We're going to play and standalone game. And we're going to look at what we have so far. And then from here on tomorrow's streams, I'll do the same thing. I'll probably stream for about three hours tomorrow. And we'll work on the menu. We'll work on other aspects of the game. But we have a cheesy first menu. And guess what we do have? That I'm going to fix right now. We have our health bar here. Weez, I don't need that. World settings, none. Blueprints, open level blueprints. Um, yeah, let's take this. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, why do we still have... That's the main menu. Alrighty, um, yeah, I got to figure that one out first. Because the game mode override is set to none. We have none. When we're on our main menu map, there's nothing. Make sure to go in here and select a viewport. But for some reason, we have our health bar. Um, there's no default pawn. There's no no character here, so it shouldn't be be shouldn't be able to pull that information in. So let's look at our interface, our main menu HUD, our graph. Well, okay, it's not here. So we just have our exit button and play button. There's nothing in here telling it to cast to the third person character or our character and to our player HUD. Our player HUD doesn't have anything but that. Why and be hell? Want to dump that one? Because we're not using that one. Why do we have that there? All right, Iron Gorilla Fist. I'm going to blame you. It's got to be your fault. Even though it's not, I'm going to blame you anyway. Um. main menu map. The map itself, I go into the map blueprints, open level blueprints. Um, it's playing our music. It's showing our main menu HUD. Just the main menu HUD. That's all it's showing is main menu HUD. It's setting our interface or our input mode into UI only. Turning on our mouse cursor. Yeah, so why... There's nothing there, and if we look at our interface folder for our main menu HUD, 
There's nothing in here that says, hey, use the, the widget for our player. Our character blueprints and our thing right here, event begin play, yes, it's in our player. Okay, that's lovely. But there's no game mode. I've got game mode disabled. I mean, even if I did side scroller game mode, um, I shouldn't have that. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of simplify things just a little bit by complicating it slightly. I want to go ahead and in blueprint game mode. We'll call this um, main menu underscore GM and then we're gonna go into it um, game session should be none on everything but the first thing we want to make sure of is HUD class is none we did not make a, a HUD default pawn is none All right, so we we did this, our game modes. We set main menu game mode. Default pawn is none. HUD class. We did our HUD as a main menu here as a widget. So let's actually go ahead and create a main menu HUD. This shouldn't take but just a second. And we want to come over here to all classes. HUD. HUD. Select main menu HUD and we want to change this one here to W so we know that it's the widget it should automatically change it everywhere else that it's got a reference to it but we'll see so in the main menu HUD then what we want to do then is go to our event graph event begin play and let's just go ahead and, and tell it to create the widget and everything there instead of in our main menu here open level blueprint I'm just going to grab this stuff right here control C and delete I'm going to get rid of my sequence node for now compile save close Aim menu HUD. Put it there. Put it there, man. Put it there. And then compile and save. So now, when we're actually in the main menu, we're in the main menu game mode. We're using the main menu HUD. No default pawn. And there it's gone. Okay. So let's go ahead and now we can close it out. Everything is working the way it should be. I should have done this before of adding in the main menu game mode and the main menu HUD. They're so simple to do and quick and easy like that. Uh, I should, just should have done that earlier. So the recap of what we've got done in the video for now is we're going to play this in standalone. And we have our main menu. We have a menu going on in the background. This is a temporary image for the main menu. I think what I'm going to end up doing is a, a small city scene and then adding in a, a render target of our character or a character standing there doing an idle animation or some other animation. Ah, just got to pick on you there, bud. So we actually have an animated character instead of this uh, boring fixed screen. Hey, we at least got music playing in our menu. so. The next step is to actually create a background or a backdrop for our main menu. And we can put that in our main menu if we want to. But it doesn't really matter. We can do it a couple different ways. So we can actually do that, build a scene inside of our main menu, and then put an animated character there and let them animate, and then place that as this. Or There's a couple different ways I can do it. But what I want to do eventually is have an animated character in here, or maybe 
NPCs walking back and forth across the screen, something of that nature. I mean, just the same as we got the um, the template map where they're walking back and forth. I can put a couple of them in and have them just walking back and forth randomly on the screen with our character standing here in the front. So we can do a much more complicated and complex but nicer looking menu, clean up the styling on our buttons, and so much more we can do with this main menu. You know, play game, it's going to go to our template map. So we really don't have anything here but a couple NPCs that randomly change their face or their, their skeletal meshes. So if we walk back this way, and we need to kind of widen it up, their their area where they can walk. Now something that I see right here, you see how there's this circular light gray versus dark gray on the street? That only happens with the spherical reflection capture. Don't know why. It's like it doesn't render correctly on the, um, the lighting. So you see right now, these two are going to get together and talk in the streets. Or in this case, they're butting heads and they can't get past each other because their their walk path is just so narrow. So there's a couple things we can do to render that. Since I'm hogging up so much of the frickin' sidewalk, I mean, I could um, move our character over a little bit more towards the curb and open up their walk space and let them walk. But you can see, even with them not butting heads, whenever they get to their, their end location where they stop running, they're going to stop, and now they randomly stop between 2 and 5 seconds, and that's all the same that we set up earlier. And then resumes walking. We have our main menu, resume game, and exit game. Everything works. Um, and with our test map, we have the ability to put some platforms and spinning platforms and things of that nature. So I'm going to contemplate what I want to add in here to bring some more stuff in. I don't want to just keep it with just the city pack only because I'm missing out if I say, oh no, I'm only going to do the city pack. Um, I'm missing out on so much good stuff from, from Cindy Studios and all their other content. I, I just want to decide which ones I want to put in. The file sizes, I mean, crap. The amount of music I'm going to end up putting in here will probably be larger because it's 30 and 40 megabytes per file size. The average City Studios asset pack is between 85 and 300 freaking megabytes. So it's not like it's huge or anything. But I want to keep the overall file size under 1 gigabyte for the entire playable game. Maps included. So it's going to be some juggling back and forth on um, what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to get rid of file size to make sure I keep it in that under 1 gigabyte category so that I can post it um, where I've got my, my current demo posted online besides throwing everything on my Google Drive account. Yeah, and by adding more stuff in, it'll it'll allow me to do more. Oh my god. This, I like the city pack, but there's so many good asset packs that I can work with, and I don't have to tie myself to one theme. I can pretty much everything that I've done in three hours worth of streaming or four hours worth of streaming, I could redo in probably about 30 or 45 minutes if I would just shut up and actually do it. So what I may do is actually go in and start from scratch and get back to where we are now off camera. And instead of calling it city side, then I'll just call it poly side or whatever, just so it's um, it says, okay, it's polygon stuff and it's a side scroller. I'll come up with a different name and go from there. But mm, let me figure out what I'm going to do for the asset packs first. And then I'll, I don't want to add all of them in and then decide I'm not going to use this from that one and this from that one. But I'll combine everything together and I'll come up with something good. Alrighty. I'm going to shut up and quit streaming for now. Um, on Unreal Engine 4, I'm going to go ahead and close everything down. And I actually may do some more um, streaming, but it'll probably be The Division. Yeah, something different. Alright, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to take a breather. Um, and if I decide to stream some Division, or I can stream Far Cry 5. I know. So, um... What I'll do is, if you guys got a preference between Far Cry 5, The Division, and with Far Cry 5, I do have Hours of Darkness. 
Um, that expansion, I've got almost 100% of it. I'm missing one of the freaking lighters. Alright, well, I'll post it on my Discord channel. Or, in, or if you you're, um, get notifications from YouTube, then you'll, you'll see it. But I will take a quick breather, and then I'll head back to um, streaming again shortly before I head to bed. Alright, guys, we'll see you soon.